Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this slingshot here. I'm going to be casting out of aluminium using the green sand casting method. In last week's tutorial, I showed you how to make the green sand from a mixture of bentonite clay and normal sand. I also showed you how to make the mould of the slingshot which I'm going to be casting today. And today's tutorial is going to be taking the cast aluminium and pouring it into the mould. All of these slingshots on the screen here, including the one that I'm going to be showing you how to make today, are made from my Tail Hammer 2.0 design, which I designed a while ago, and I really like it. It's still the most comfortable design which I've came up with. A lot of people have been asking, since I've made all of these slingshots, why have I bothered making them all in the exact same design? Isn't it a little bit unimaginative? And I sort of agree with that, but this whole casting series, where I've cast these four different slingshots, has been about testing out different methods of casting, and it makes it much more easy to be able to view the results and which method worked best when you actually just make the same slingshot so you can see which one turned out best. If you want to see how to make any of these slingshots then the link will be in the description to my aluminium casting playlist where I showed you how to make all of these slingshots. Now it's time to cast the slingshots and the first thing that I've got to do is turn on my forge. This is the forge which I'm going to be using, it's just a simple coal or charcoal powered forge. If you want to know how to make a forge like this, there's a great tutorial by Grant Thompson, the King of Random, on his channel, and I'll put a link in the description down below to his video. This forge is a very simple forge that just works by putting the fuel, either coal, charcoal, or smokeless fuel, inside there, and then turning on the blower, which supplies lots of oxygen to the fire and makes it get really hot. So once the fire gets hot enough, I can put the crucible inside, and as you can see, right down at the bottom already it's glowing so that's almost hot enough to melt the aluminium. In the previous casting video where I showed you how to cast aluminium ingots I already explained all of the different crucible options and the crucible that I'll be using so for more information go and check out that video the link is in the description but in short I'm basically just using a 3 kilogram graphite crucible bought off eBay. So now the forge and the crucible are up to temperature I'm going to melt down the aluminium ingots which I cast in the previous video. I'm just going to put them into the crucible and leave them for a couple of minutes to melt. Once they're molten, I'll then add in more. With this graphite crucible, I like to fill it until the entire crucible is full with molten aluminium, just so I can make sure I've got enough for the entire piece. So now the crucible is full all the way up to the top, and that's completely molten aluminium. Now all I need to do is add a borax flux to try and get rid of all of the impurities. So this is my borax flux and it's borax decarbohydrate. I got this off eBay for only a couple of pounds and I'm just going to take a little bit of it with this spoon and put it into this aluminium foil which I can then fold up. I can then push this into the middle of the crucible and hopefully it will deposit the borax flux when it melts and then this will bind to all of the impurities, make them rise to the top, so I can scoop them out with the spoon. So the first slingshot that I cast that evening was just using the lost foam casting method, and I also made a tutorial on that slingshot. You can see a preview of the tutorial in the top left of the screen now, and the link will be in the description down below where you can find that full tutorial. The exact same process with melting down and purifying the aluminium is done again, and now it's time to cast the green sand slingshot. As you can see on top of the mould, I've got some hammers holding the mould closed so that it doesn't fly open and let aluminium spill out. I basically just pour in the aluminium gently, not too quickly so it doesn't overflow, and just let it go through the entire of the mould, and then once it's full I just pour the rest into an ingot tray. Oops, bit of an overflow. Right, so now it's been a couple of minutes and I think the aluminium is going to be solid inside so I can start to try and uncover it. Try and recover the green sand so that I can reuse it. Has it worked? Yes, it has. Almost a perfect replica so far.
So this is what the slingshot looks like once I take it straight out of the mould. And as you can see on this side, it's actually really smooth and it looks really nice. It's pretty much exactly to the shape which I made it originally. And also you can see these sort of lumps here. And these lumps were actually just parts where I pushed through a metal spike into the mould so the air could escape. You can see on this side that was face down in the mould, it was this way up, as you can see from the sprue. But you can see on this side that there's some sort of lumps and bumps, and my theory for that is, basically I made this mould the night before, just experimenting with it, and then cast it the day later, and I think what happened with the green sand, since mine was water-based, was the sand on the surface dried out as the water evaporated from it, and then it became brittle and some parts of it fell down the mould into the bottom section here, and created these lumps inwards but not very much filing would just require to get all of these out. So a way that I could improve this method if I did come back to it in the future would just be to easily just make the mould only a couple of minutes before I do the casting, which really wouldn't be that difficult. So this is the slingshot that it was cast from, and as you can see they're pretty much exactly the same. And this has worked out really well. So let's get to work shaping up the slingshot until it looks something more like this. First step is to remove this sprue and this metal can just be remelted down into more slingshots or other projects. A hacksaw and a metal file are used to remove the sprue and shape it down to the edge of the slingshot so that it doesn't even look like it was there anymore. This is what the area where the sprue was looks like after I filed it down and as you can see it's just flush with the slingshot now. Now I'm going to take just regular metal files and shape the slingshot until it's in the shape that I like it and I'm basically going to remove all of these pits and grooves until it's just all down to bare aluminium. While I'm doing this I'm going to be clamping the slingshot up in a bench vise since it will keep it much more secure and I'm also making sure that as I remove material I need to keep it symmetrical so if I remove a millimetre on one side I'm going to have to make sure that I remove a millimetre from the other side as well. So this is what the slingshot looks like after filing and shaping and as you can see there's barely any imperfections in the surface at all pretty much apart from this one here which is a little bit deep and I could get it out with only a couple of minutes of filing but I think it would distort the shape of the slingshot too much and these two ones on the side here but hopefully they'll sort of just blend into the appearance at the end once I finish the slingshot. Also it's pretty much symmetrical as far as I can see and it looks quite nice and it fits into my hand really well and any of the parts that I want to be rounded are rounded now. So now to remove all of the deep scratches left behind by filing on the slingshot I'm going to be using this set of rotary sanding discs or sanding drums and I'm going to be putting it in just a regular power drill and then they're going to help remove all of the deep scratches. These were only a couple of pounds off Amazon and you can buy them really cheaply but if you don't want to use them you could also just use a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a wooden dowel. This is what the slingshot looks like once all of the deep scratches have been removed just using the rotary sanding drums. As you can see there's no deep scratches left behind by clogged up files and it's now just nice smooth scratches going in one direction from the sanding drums. Now we can move on to sanding. So I've explained sanding very well in some of my other slingshot tutorials on casting aluminium slingshots so I'm not going to go into too much depth here. If you want some more information on sanding, link will be in the description down below to my aluminium casting playlist where you can see all of my other videos where I explain it in a little bit more depth. Basically, I'm just going to be using some wet and dry sandpaper from as low as 80 grit all the way up to 600 and 1000 grit to basically polish up the slingshot as high as I can go. I'm also be using sanding sponges purchased from eBay to help me even more. So this is what the slingshot looks like once I've finished sanding it up to 600 grit. As you can see it's pretty shiny and in places is really reflective. For the final polish I'm going to be using this buffing wheel which is attached to my bench grinder. You can buy these really cheap off eBay and they can attach into the chuck of a drill or any other power tool that spins like this and they're really really useful. If you don't have that and you want to be cheaper you can just use a buffing compound just on a piece of paper towel and just rub it on like this but it's not as effective as this and it won't leave as nice a finish. I'm also going to be using some soft metal buffing compound this time.
to this what the slingshot looks like once I've finished buffing it. I decided that it would be nice since all of my other slingshots I've made completely mirror polish all over if I just left this top bit unbuffed so it's kind of a nice matte look and then this bottom part where my hand's touching it is completely polished up and I think it looks really really nice. So this is what all four of my finished cast aluminium slingshots look like at the end of the casting process, polishing and sanding process. This is one which I've made today and I've banded it up with some double layered tapered theraband gold made for shooting 15mm steel ball bearings. As you can see it's really shiny and it looks really nice and I've deliberately left this top section with a matte finish so that it's mirror polished here and then matte finish on the top gives it quite a nice contrast. You can't really see it very well on the camera but I think it looks really nice in real life. In the comparison to the slingshot that it was originally cast from, I think it's pretty much identical in shape and size and ergonomics. Feels really nice, the only difference is it's a lot heavier since it's solid aluminium instead of only half. So now I can test out shooting the slingshot. So I'm firing some 15mm steel ball bearings just to that target over there. So in conclusion, I'm now going to decide which method I like the most. So this entire video casting series of casting these at four aluminium slingshots has been to try and find the best method for casting, since on my old casting videos people are always suggesting new methods. And I know that I haven't tried the lost wax casting method, and I might try that sometime in the future, but that is mainly for small things like jewellery and I'm not sure how well it would work for something larger like this. So in conclusion, I think the half casting method works quite well if you don't really want to spend much time on the mould making process, but there is quite a lot of time at clean up afterwards and sometimes you get a couple of imperfections like this one here. I think the two best methods were the lost foam casting and the green sand method. So if you don't have a slingshot that you already like, definitely go for the lost foam casting method since it's really easy to create a nice slingshot out of foam. But if you have a slingshot that you already like and you love the ergonomics and you don't think that you could recreate it or you just can't be bothered to recreate it, the green sand casting method is definitely the way to go since it creates almost a perfect replica of the thing that you were trying to make in the first place. So thanks for watching guys, as some of you might be pleased to hear since you're getting a little bit sick of slingshot videos, this is going to be my last slingshot video for a while. Next week's videos will be some more forging tutorials and something else, I'm not really sure yet.